guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Monday, which means it's a Cricut tutorial, and today I am answering one of the most beginner questions, and that's one of the things that I'm getting is people are asking me to do beginner tutorials. One of my biggest tips would be to subscribe to Cricut's YouTube channel because they do a lot of beginner tutorials. But today I am tackling one of the biggest problems with getting your Cricut is how to use Design Space. All about it, every button, what it does. So I shot this for you guys and I hope that it answers all of those burning questions that you just don't know where to begin. Um, but they are very basic questions, but they will go over pretty much everything in Design Space. Pretty long tutorial, but it's a good one. So make sure to check it out, the whole thing, if you don't know how to use Design Space or if you're a brand new beginner to the Cricut Design Space. So let's get going. And if you guys don't have a Cricut, check out the links down below. Or if you guys need more products, I am always putting the latest coupons. So make sure to check it out anytime that you want to shop for Cricut because I'm always putting up the, the coupons that they have. All right, so let's go. To get there, you will go to Cricut.com. And then right here, it says Cricut Design Space. We are going to click that and it is going to open Design Space. There are all of these ideas that you can look at and they're always updating these. Obviously these are um, a lot of like clovers, shamrocks, stuff like that, Easter stuff. So you can get inspired. Another thing is that if you click on them, it'll give you all the stuff that you need, including all of the, um, the things that you can find in Cricut Design Space if you want to make this. So that's just a fun resource that uh, Cricut puts together for people. So it's kind of like a Pinterest, but just for Cricut stuff. And okay, but we're going to create a new project. So we're gonna click right here. And then you'll see that this is set up like a grid. So basically 12 by 12 is what your regular mat is going to be. Um, obviously it can cut from 12 all the way up to 24. If you are making anything bigger, it will prompt you to use um, a larger mat. It'll also prompt you to splice it and you can use uh, two mats. So what we're gonna do is if we wanted to set our canvas to figure out like what we want to design on, let's go with bag tags. It's going to set this up in the background and that's it's not the actual bag tag that you're gonna be using, but it'll give you kind of an idea. So say we wanted to write something on it, we would use this as a template to try to figure out like the sizing. Of course, you're gonna measure your own project to make sure that it's the right size, but it gives you kind of like a fun template to work on. So we can add text by clicking add text. One thing I've noticed on a lot of people's, so let's do Miss Anti Tay. One thing I've noticed on a lot of people's projects is they don't do kerning like they're supposed to. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so when you go in and type something, it's very spaced out and it looks like this. We're gonna edit this and I'm gonna pick a, a scripty font. So when you open up your fonts, you're gonna notice that there's all these Cricut Access fonts that you get for free with Cricut Access. There's also any fonts that you have. So it also has a lot, all of your fonts. So if you have anywhere that you can download fonts, I really like dafont.com um, to download my fonts. But there's also ones that you can purchase as well for one time, or I think if you purchase them, you can use them over and over again. But Basically, there's tons of free stuff and then you can also go to Defont and get even more free stuff. So I'm gonna pick out like a scripty one. So let's go with Brand Ball Small. This is something I got off Defont. Okay, so you'll see that it's a script um, cutout and all these letters are supposed to flow, but they don't. That's because this is set up so that you do it yourself. Now right here is where you will space your letters. So you can squeeze them together, but you'll notice that they start to connect and then some of them are still really gapped. We don't want that. So we wanna keep them kind of far away. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click right here, which will isolate all of our letters. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. Okay. So now our letters are isolated and we can move them Perfectly. I've noticed a lot of projects on Pinterest will have um, letters that are gapped like this and it makes me realize that a lot of people don't understand that they're supposed to do this before they cut. It'll make 
if you're doing vinyl, it'll make that a lot easier. Um, I'm gonna move this up so the eye goes above it. This is actually technically called kerning in graphic design. Um, kerning is the way that letters fit together um, because mathematically it's really not possible to create a perfect font. Okay, let's kern this baby. So we're gonna move all these guys together. Now this is what I'm talking about right here. If this were to cut all these lines when we attach it, it would technically separate the E from the H because it'll be it'll register all of that as a cut line actually, and it will still cut this little notch right here, and it'll still cut this little notch right here. So you'll actually get this little piece that might come out that you don't wanna deal with. That's why it's really important to weld. So now that we have two things, I don't want to select it all. So I'm going to hold shift and I can either go back to my layers and click them all or I can hold shift and click all my letters since they're nice and big. So now I have that all clicked. You can go to layers and see that they're all highlighted because I have them selected. These ones are not. We're going to weld them. By welding them, we are creating one solid flow. See that how those disappeared? Now it's not going to cut those little notches out. It's going to cut this beautiful hello all in one sh in one shot. I kind of like that. Hello, Miss Auntie Tay. I gotta put that on something now. Okay, so then there's other things. So now we have set canvas. We talked about adding text. Inserting shapes. Now shapes are just super simple, but there are a couple things that I wanted to teach you guys about. Same concept with attaching and welding. If we were to put two stars, and say we were to put them on top of each other and attach them, it would cut both parts of the star out. If we were to weld them, it would create one image. Now, this star is scalable. So say we want to scale it and put it behind here. I can either double or right click and say move backward and it'll move it to the behind it. And I can do that again if I want it to go all the way to the back. This is just for design reference too. So um, I'll touch on what I was gonna say in a second. Okay, so this star is now not, it, it's registering that you want it to cut it, but you want it to cut it in gray. It's registering that you want this blue to be cut out in blue. We are just doing, this basically is just a, the, the spot that we're in right now on Design Space is all for visual aid. It's not for cutting. So if you were to send this to the mat, it's gonna move everything around unless we tell it to stay in one spot. So right now we're just playing with how we want it to look and you can layer things on top of each other. It's not gonna ruin how you're gonna cut unless you actually weld things like we did with the hello. Okay, so now with this star, you can scale it as big and as little as you want. So let's say we wanted it to fit right here sideways in the hello. This is our design space. So of course we want to work together and see how it would fit. So say we wanted it there. Now, say you don't like the way this star is, like how fat it is. You unlock it and you can skew it. So if you want a little squinky star or a long star, elongated, I don't know why you would want that. I don't think it's cute, but you can do that. Basically, it's more for the square. If you want to make a rectangle, you unlock it and you do like that. And you do like this and you do like that, okay? So that's what skewing is for. So we have inserting shapes. You've got a score line. A score line is going to be a line that um, is registering that you want it to score. I haven't really shown you guys how scoring works on the Cricut yet, but I, I definitely will have to do that. Okay, so let's let's work with the heart because the heart is definitely something that you might want to skew. So unlock it. Say you want a little bit of a fatter heart. Say you want it to be a little bit of a longer heart. That's good for skewing. Okay, so now we have our two main things that you're going to play with up here. But before I hit over there, I want to come over here to the layers. So over here, you've got the stuff that you're working with. You'll see that these are blue, but if I click it, all these colors come up. Basically what this is asking you is what color vinyl or iron-on you're gonna use. Let's pretend like we're doing a vinyl project, just for our sake. Say I wanna use green. I'm gonna click green and it's gonna register that I want that green. Let's put our star back in here so I can help 
you guys understand this fully. Okay, so say we're doing a vinyl project and we wanna have the hello in green, the star in gray, the Miss Auntie Tay in blue, since it's already blue. Okay, if we wanted to change it, we'd click on here, we'd change it to purple. But see how it's all dis detached? That's why I didn't wanna do that right now. So, um, until we weld it. So, say right now, okay, we'll, we'll leave it like that. Right now it's registering that I want this M in purple and the rest of this in blue, this in green, and this in gray. Basically what it's gonna do, I'm gonna do this real quick, is show you when I put go, it's gonna separate all the pieces onto different mats to prompt you to use different color vinyl. Now, a trick that I like is to design it like this, but then turn it all into one color at the end. So let's say we just turn them all black because that will say I want to cut it all in one color, even though I don't. This is just a lot of mental stuff you have to think. And then I'll move my star down here, my hello up here, and on my actual mat, I will put my color here and my other color here. That's just a not so beginner tip, if you guys are looking for that. Okay, so here is where it tells you what you're asking it to do to this layer. Now say I wanted it to write this layer. I'm gonna go turn it to write and it's gonna give you all of these options of pens that you're gonna be using. So let's just go with black point three tip pen. And if I wanted to score it, I would score it. If I wanted to print it, I would print it. Now you can have two things on your mat saying you're gonna print this and cut this. It's just gonna take you to a few different steps before it finishes your project. When you click go, it's gonna prompt you to print the stuff that you you wanna print and then, and then afterwards it'll prompt you to cut. Um, also, if you wanted this in glitter vinyl and this in regular vinyl, definitely use two different mats because you need two different cut pressures and you need to be able to set it to different um, settings. This is a Cricut Design Space tutorial. So we've gone over editing. Um, so syncing, syncing means we are going to um, change the color of something. So if I wanted these to be the same color, instead of clicking like how I was showing you guys with the purple, say I wanted this to come down to be the same color, it's gonna turn it blue. Say I wanted them all to be the same color, then I just drag those down and it's all blue. Since, see how the star isn't on there, that's because we have the star set to print. Let's set it back to cut. So when I go to sync, it's there. And now everything's blue. Our canvas is how we can set up um, different things that we wanna do. So right now we have it to um, just the standard canvas. You can also change your height and your width and all that. So go is where you're gonna send it to your mat. Arrange is like I was showing you where you double or right click. This is arranging it just shows like what's on top, what's on bottom. So right now the star's on top. I'm gonna arrange it and I'm gonna send it backward and it goes behind hello. Now everything is a layer. You can also see where they're at here. Hello's on top, the star's in the middle, and this is, so right now if I were to put this over it, it's over it. See how it's above it? That's layers and it's just like it sounds, it's layers. So if we wanted this to go behind Miss Auntie Tay, we would arrange it, we'd move it backward, and it would be behind Auntie Tay, and it would also move down to the bottom right here. Selecting all sounds just like what it is. It's selecting everything on the map. Copy, paste, if you have whatever you have selected, when you click copy and paste, it's going to paste everything you have selected. If we just want to select one thing, copy, paste, now you just have one thing. If you wanna cut it, you can cut it, but it's gonna cut everything you have selected. You can still paste it. Undo takes away whatever you just did. Redo adds it back. Saving saves your file into your Cricut Design Space. This is perfect for um, going back to it on a different, uh, different device. Say I wanted to go and work on my phone, I would just save it right here. Cricut example and I'm gonna save that puppy and now it's in my files I've got make it now which is a new so make it now we already saved this project so let's just go with yes 
So a Make It Now project will be... Back to right here. These are Make It Now projects where everything's set up for you. Let's go back. Let's go back to the very beginning. Okay, so if you wanted to start a new project, that's right here. You want to go to your saved projects, that's right here. If you want to save your project as it is, you click here. Okay, so let's go into these more extensive options. We've got upload images. Uploading an image is uploading an image. Basically, it's where all of your images that you've ever uploaded are at in one spot. That's your library of uploaded images. So this is why you wanna tag your images real good because you can see that they get to be abundant very quickly. Um, you can also share these with other people who are in Cricut Design Space. So you can upload a pattern or you can upload an image. We're just gonna stick with image right now. So right now we're gonna browse Let's just pick a little image. So I really like to work with JPEGs or SVGs. So let's work, let's find an SVG in my plethora of things that I have going on here. Okay, so this is an aerial that I turned into an SVG. There will be a new tutorial coming up soon on how to create your own SVGs with Illustrator. So basically, this is where you wanna tag. So say I wanna tag it as aerial, water, um, sunset, uh, Little Mermaid. This will be able to help me and others find this later on in life when I wanna use it again. So I'm gonna save this. Since it was an SVG, it came in real nice and I didn't have to do much to it. I will show you guys how to do a JPEG. So JPEGs are probably the easiest things to find, but JPEGs are, um, okay, so let's say we wanted to bring in this Alice and she's already a PNG, but watch, we're gonna play with her. We are going to do more with her. Okay, so we don't want her to be a simple image because see how it kind of doled her colors down? Moderately complex kind of made her what she was, but we want her to be a complex image because we want her colors to stand out. Now, on a JPEG, it's gonna take you, or a PNG, if this was a JPEG and the background was white, right now we would just click right here and it would take this whole background away. But right now it's registering that you're gonna probably wanna cut or print all of this, but we're gonna tell it where we want it to cut. So let's erase her white. Say we just want it to cut right here. We want all these things to be cut out. Or say we just wanted her outline. We could even do this and make an outline of her so that we had her being cut out and um, everything being left behind. So we can take all of her um, colors out and it will register that we want to just cut all those silhouette lines of her. So obviously this can get pretty detailed or you could just do a simple image. Obviously we would keep her all colored in if we just wanted to do a print thing cut with her. So then it would register that um, we just wanted to print. So I can zoom in real close to get all of her upper lip, or I can just leave it, because I don't think that will be that big of a deal. When we click continue, if you wanna save it as a print thing cut, or you wanna save it as a cut image, you'll see that, okay, so we left a little bit too much in her eyes. All of this looks okay, leaving a little bit of those shadows. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna make sure I get those little whites of her eyes out, because it just looked a little bit too not perfect on her eyes. So now you can see that she's a nice, pretty cut image. We're gonna click her, we're gonna tag her, Alice sitting in wonderland, dot, 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 whatever, save. Okay, so now we have her saved in our library. If we wanna add her, here you can add a bunch, you just click them all and then you click insert images. But here you won't, you'll notice that it doesn't look like the image perfectly. It's not a detailed, perfect image. Like this is obviously doesn't look like that. So we're gonna just insert our image, which is our Alice, and we can make her big, we can make her little, all that good stuff. So let's do a hello, Miss Auntie Tay with an Alice. I'm just winging this and it's actually turning into a really cute project. So I might just have to cut this when we're all done with it. Okay, 
So now we're gonna insert images, which is one of my favorite things to go to when I'm in a hurry because Cricut offers really awesome stuff, especially Disney stuff too. So they have a lot of Disney cartridges and I've explained this in my questions video why they still call them cartridges. They are just pretty much files. So let's see, Disney, let's just search Disney. They have their own Disney branding. So they have a lot of stuff. And then obviously, since I typed in Disney, anything that I tagged with Disney will come up too. These are things that I've done in the past, but all of their stuff comes up. Let's specifically do Alice, since we already are working with her. We'll just do Alice and see what comes up. Now look it, they already have this image of Alice that we just uploaded. And then here's ours. So let's just work with theirs. Now it's gonna say that it's $1.99. If you wanna use this, then you have to pay $1.99. So go to categories, and obviously they have a Disney category. So you can click, let's click this Buzz. Let's play with Buzz. He's gonna be lots of fun because he's got lots of colors. Oh, we already have Alice in here too. So the nice thing is with their files, you'll see that this entire thing is in a pretty layers. So if we wanted her hair to be not cut out and this not to be cut out and that not to be cut out and that not to be cut out. All you have to do is click this eyeball and that'll take it away from your project. I don't know why you would want to do this, but you might. So basically you can play with these layers and figure out, okay, I just wanted to do a silhouette of her, which isn't very cute because it looks like a big black blob. Um, but yeah, so maybe we just wanted her teacup. That's basically how that works. But I wanted to play with Buzz. So look at all of his, his layers that he has going on over here. He's got everything from his green, but see when this, if this is a vinyl cut, when we put go, he is going to be all types of uh, colors. He's going to tell you to use a bunch of different mats. So you better be ready to be doing some work if you're gonna be cutting him out in vinyl, but that's a fun project. Okay, so now we have insert images, upload images, insert shapes. So I think that is about it. If you guys have more questions, um, this is how you calibrate your machine. If you're doing print and cut and getting it all set up, um, your account, setting up your new machines. Let's go into finally getting ready to go. So I know I've talked about this, but we're going to go and it's going to prompt you. Now, if you're doing iron on, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna click this little button right here. What that's gonna do is flip your image around so that it's backwards. Say we were doing this on iron-on, the machine doesn't know, it just knows what color you're using. So this is where it's asking you what your product is. When you set your machine to iron-on, it will ask you, why did you not click this button? Why? And you have to respond, like I meant to do it or I didn't mean to do it. But just beware because that's the number one problem with iron-on is you forget to do that and if you're working on a big project. So see how it says purchase down here? That's because we have a Disney product in our thing that's not included in Cricut Access. I'm gonna take them out for now. And this is um, a good example of how you can upload your own images if you're doing your own personal stuff. Um, say we were just making this for like decor or something for our room. Now we have something black and something blue. Now you'll see that this is all movable because we did not attach it. If we were to attach it, because remember we attached this, it's stuck together. If we wanted this to cut how it's gonna look, we could do that on the other, on the last board and attach it. But since we didn't do that, we can move it around, which I prefer because then I can move everything right up into the corners, squeeze it all nice and tight and save on my vinyl as much as I can. I like to move them as close to the corners as I can, not too close because I want to leave room for a little bit of error. And then if I'm cutting a little piece of vinyl to put on my mat five by five, I will make sure I have at least a half an inch of buffer space so I don't even make room for brain error because that's pretty much where I always make error. I don't, the machine doesn't make error, I do. Then you click go. And then right here is where you're going to choose um, your machine, my machine is not on right now, so it will look for it, and then once it finds it, you will make sure your dial is set. If it's a custom setting, it'll have a little spot right here to click and find the setting that you want. You'll load and you'll click go. 
and then that's good to go. See how this looks just like a, like a mat? It shows you where it's going to be cutting her out and that is it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope this helped you. If you guys have any more questions, make sure to let me know in the comments. Love you guys. Bye.